Okay, this week we are starting in Excel, and Excel is a Microsoft Office program for spreadsheets, and you'll find you use this a lot in your home life as well as work. I use it every week when I pay my bills, so let's jump right on in. We're Excel Module 1, Project 1. Um, so I've already downloaded my instructions here, so I'm going to download my starting document in Excel. And let's take a few minutes and we're going to look at um, our Excel. First I'm going to enable editing here. Now the very first page just should say Waterville Vet Veterinary Hospital. This page is just um, a document page to make sure that you have the right file. Down here at the bottom you'll see you have documentation and then you have invoice. Now each one of these is a different spreadsheet. When you start Excel from scratch you only you'll have one spreadsheet. You can click on this little plus button at the bottom to add more spreadsheets um, and worksheets to your project. We're going to click on this invoice tab and you can see we bring up another um, spreadsheet here. Now let's talk about what you're looking at here in Excel. Across the top of the page you have the ribbon just like you had when you were working in Word. Um, you've got different tabs, File, Home, Insert, View, um, Page, Layout, Formulas, Data. You probably won't have this Draw tab. I have this on here because I have a tablet and I can actually write on the screen with my uh, with my pen and so that's where the draw comes in at. Um, you probably also don't have the developer tab. That is a, another tab that's used for more advanced Excel features. So don't worry if you don't if you don't see those particular tabs on your on your screen. But you should have home, insert view, page layout, formulas, data, uh, review, and those. They work this the same way they did in Word. Each one has different options you can choose from. The Home tab contains those skills that are most common according to Microsoft Office. Um, on the Insert tab you're going to find where you can insert different things. You can insert pictures just like you did in Excel, but we'll also be inserting charts and different things like that later on as well. So I'm going to click back on Home tab again. And let's look on the File tab actually. And here is where you're going to see your uh, back, back page view here. Well, you can protect your workbook. You can actually lock it with a password so nobody else can mess with it. Um, and over here is your Save and your Save As, just like we had in Word. A lot of the information is exactly the same as in Word. I'll click back on this arrow here, come back to the screen. Now down here in the bottom you see um, A, B, C, D across the top. These are your columns and columns are indicated by letters. Your rows are indicated by numbers and you can see they keep on going. Um, you have hundreds of rows that you can choose from in Excel and it's the same uh, as you go across. I'm just hitting my arrow key on my keyboard and you can see it takes me clear over double alphabet here. I can even go to click triple alphabet so you can see your spreadsheet can be very um, very large and it depends upon, depends upon what you need to do with it. So we don't need to be real large, so I'm just going to go back to A1, and you can see here I've got this little box around here. A1, that's the active cell that I have right now, that's what I've uh, clicked in. If I click in B1, um, B1 becomes my active cell. And right up here it tells me what cell I'm in. This is your name box. And so if I click down here, now I'm in F5. Um, some of your instructions will say like go to A2. So it's wanting you to go to row, column A, row 2, and select it, and that becomes your active cell. Whatever you do next is going to happen in that cell. Now right next to it, um, we have a box here. Once you start typing, this little X will become active, and you can delete by clicking on this X, or you can enter by clicking on this um, 
checkbox. Um, just going to type my name. You can see as soon as I start typing, the X becomes active in this check mark. And this is cancel, and this is enter. You can also hit the enter key on your keyboard. Um, up here, you have your do and redo buttons. So you can undo stuff from up there. And undo and redo can become your friends as you're working in Excel. Also, as you start typing, you're going to see information that shows up here in your formula bar. Now, this is called a formula because in Excel, we can actually do a lot with formulas. We can do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and we can do more uh, in-depth formulas. We can even take your home mortgage and figure out what your payments are going to be if you pay 5.2% interest over 30 years. So there's a lot of different formulas you can do. We don't get that deep in class, so don't worry about that. So here we have our um, data in our document, and we have text data, and we have number data. And so let's look at our instructions here. We've got um, vet clinic that we're working for, and they want us to develop an invoice worksheet to help them track their invoices. So we want to make sure that we've got our invoice worksheet selected here. We're going to save it as Excel Module 1 Project 1 with your last name up here. Um, and then the first thing we want to do is we want to enter the text Waterville Pet Clinic in cell A1. So usually it tells you what to do and then what cell to work it in. So make sure as you're working through your Excel assignments that you take the time to read the entire instruction. So we're going to click first in cell A1 to make that our active cell. And then we're going to put in Waterville Pet Clinic. Now we haven't finished putting anything in yet until we click on this check mark button up here or we hit the enter key. Now we, the main difference is when we hit the enter key, our active cell is going to move down one. If we were to click this check mark up here, our active cell would stay the same. So we've got um, Waterville Pet Clinic. Make sure you spell it correctly. In B4, so we're going to come over here to column B, row 4, and it wants us to enter the date 5-12-21. So we're going to just put 5-12-21 and hit the enter key. And you'll notice Excel automatically puts it in as 5-12-20-21. Um, if you're um, Using a Mac, it might be a little different, but if you're working with a PC, it should automatically change that to 2021 for you. In B5, we want to change this text from B101 to R101, so we have the correct reference number. So all we have to do here is just start typing. And so as soon as we start, start typing, it's going to take um, that information away and start typing in some new ones. Now Excel also wants to help you. So you can see as soon as I hit that R, it put, it put in there Randy Perkle because it thinks, well, maybe that's what you want to put in here. If it was, all I would have to do is hit the enter key. It's not, however, so I can just keep on typing. This is R101. And as soon as I get past um, the text that looks the same, then it's going to just go blank. So R101. Now and hit the enter key. And C13, so we're going to go to column C, row 13. And you can see there's some information missing here. We don't have any quantity. And we want to enter the quantity 2. So we're just going to hit the number 2 on our keyboard. In cell C17, uh, this isn't correct. What they have done right here is uh, they've just typed a value, the value 4. So we've got value 1, 2, and 2 up here. Um, we don't want a value here in our total. We want to use a formula. We want Excel to automatically add the information for us. So we want to clear this content. So right over here we have clear, and we just want to clear the content. So clear that information out from there. Now in E10, E10, we want to figure out what our total charge is going to be. We want to form a formula that multiplies D10 
by C10. So we want to something that's going to do the multiplication for us of 150 times 1. Now we all know that that's 150. However, what if that quantity was 22? Okay, we want a formula that's going to automatically do it for us. So to do that, we're going to put hit the equal key first on our keyboard and we want it to multiply D10. So we're going to click in D10 and then we're going to hit the symbol for multiply, which is the asterisk or shift eight. And then we're going to click in C10. So we're telling it to multiply D10 times C10. So if we change these numbers, it would still refer to these cells. Okay, so once we have this D10 and C10 in there, now if I hit the check mark up here, you can see it's going to automatically enter that in. So here we have 150. Up here it says D10 times C10. So you can see if we need to change this to 22, it's going to automatically change our total for us. Now we want that to be 1 though, so um, it should be 150 here. So now that we've got that total up here, we want the same total all the way down here clear through E14. So we can use this little handle. I'm going to zoom in here um, and see that little, there's a little green square right here and it's the fill handle. If you move your mouse over it, your mouse is going to change to a crosshair symbol or a small plus sign. So when you see it look like that, you're going to click down and then drag with your mouse down and it's going to copy that formula down so you don't have to keep re-entering that formula. And what's really cool is it's going to change it. So up here it's D10 times C10. The next one it automatically changes it to D11 times C11. And this one it's going to change it to D12 times C12. So as you copy the formula down it changes the formula to indicate the row that you're copying it to or the column if we were co copying it over to the side. So it's automatically doing that for us. So let's move back down here. So we've got our, we've used the fill handle to um, copy that range down. Now in E15, E15, we want a formula that's going to sum. So sum means to add. So we want to add our total in the range E10 to E14 to calculate the subtotal of all these charges. Now when you enter a formula, you have to put an equal sign in. But up here in the editing group, there is an auto sum. And here are the six or five common functions that we use. We want the sum. It's going to automatically add it up for us. And Excel even puts this little box around. It says, is this what you want to, to add up? And if it's correct, all you have to do is hit enter or the check mark. You always want to make sure that those little marching ants are around the totals that you want to add. So we're going to click the check mark. And it's going to automatically add that up for us so we know what our, to our subtotal is. Now, in, they've got a discount of $25. That's just automatically set. So here we need to enter a total. So we want to enter a total. We want a formula. We don't just want to use a calculator. We want Excel to automatically figure out if this is the subtotal of $431.50, minus the discount of $25, what is their total? So we're going to hit the equal key again, and we're going to just click up here in E15, and now we're going to hit the subtract key, and then E16. So we're telling it, hey, whatever is the subtotal, minus the $25 and give us the total. So now I can hit the check mark up here, or the enter key, and it's going to tell me that the total invoice for the total for this invoice is $406.50. So now um, we've got most of our stuff done. So go ahead and save it.
so you don't lose anything. And now in number 8, in cell E17, enter a formula that subtracts the value in E16, the discount. Oh, we've already done that one. We just did that. Never mind. We are now going to number 9. We're going to copy the content of cell B6 and then paste it in cell C20. So first thing we need to do is find um, B6. So we've got B and we've got 6. Okay. So we've got our name. So we want to copy the content of this cell. So I can come up here and I can click Copy. And then I'm going to go down to C20. So here's C20. And then I can paste it. Now we've got this little box that comes up. These are our paste options. Um, do we want to, to copy it with the, keeping the formula or do we want the new, new formatting? Okay. Hit the wrong button. So we're going to go to B6, copy, and then come down to C20 and paste. And this little paste options button isn't going to go away until you um, type something else new. But what this is going to do is going to automatically, whatever, whatever you've had up here, it's going to copy it down here for you. Okay, so we want to hide the grid lines so it looks just like a printed invoice. We don't want these lines to come up. So I believe that's up here on the page layout tab, our page setup button. We're going to click on this. Um, got our sheet. We don't want to print the grid lines. We want to hide the grid lines. And it is hiding from me. Here's where we print. Okay, we need to hide the grid lines. I kind of had a brain format here. Um, page layout is if I want to print um, and change the name, but here's the view, and up here in the view, I can hide the grid lines. Okay, and so now it just looks like a piece of paper. You still have your different cells, they're all there, you just don't see your grid lines anymore. So we've got those uh, hidden, and so this is what your final sheet should look like. So you're going to save it at this point and submit it in Blackboard for a grade.